insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 80, Braces Revisited. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my awake and energetic co-host, Madison Whalen. (laughs) Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing pretty good. So, uh, kind of another reversal of roles here. Um, You know, you have been hosting the last couple And uh, this was one of the ones that um, we had done very early on. In fact, it was the very first podcast that we did. Yep. And this was episode zero, kind of our pilot podcast. Mm -hmm. did, And it was one of the first, I think, eight episodes we did that were audio only. We didn't have video going at the time. Nope. Uh, And that's because we didn't have the studio set up at the time. Um, so a lot's changed from the braces standpoint for you, correct? Yep. Um, so we thought it'd be worthwhile to go back at a lot of our old podcasts and see what's changed, what's updated. Can we refresh the podcast? Is there news? Um, is there value in going back and, and discussing some of these old topics again? And this was the first topic we came up with because you just had some dental work done. Yep. So this is going to be the first in a series of revisited podcasts that we're going to be doing. uh, Just to sort of catch up on some of the important topics that we've talked about in the past. Yep. So today we are going to be talking about um, a quick review of the last, I don't know, 12 months or so since, well, more than 12 months now since the first uh, Braces podcast, Mm -hmm. Um, how things have been with that. Then we're going to talk about what's changed, what other work has gotten, have you had done, what effect has it had on you, um, how has it affected your quality of life and so forth. And then we'll sum up by talking about what's yet to happen because apparently getting braces is a multifaceted multi-phased uh project i guess Mm -hmm. Uh, and for you it's been kind of an evolution of moving from one stage to another yep but before we do that uh i would invite everyone to subscribe to our podcast you can get us on any of your popular podcast um services uh apple podcast spotify google Uh, we are now listed on amazon Podcasts as well uh, you can subscribe to us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Uh, and just a special note, if you are an Amazon Prime member, you do get a free uh, subscription through Twitch. Um, and any subscriptions that we get to our channel definitely help us out. So we appreciate that. Uh, we'd also love to hear your comments, your feedback. Tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what you'd like us to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. Uh, You can message us on Twitter at insights underscore things, or you can uh, check us out on Facebook and give us feedback through Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can watch us live. uh, Well, you can watch us streaming, I should say, on Twitch five days a week at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can catch all of our podcasts. Uh, high resolution versions on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things, or you can catch our audio podcasts at podcast.insights into the in, insights into teens.com. Uh, I 
That's it for the plugs. Ready to get into the show? Yep. All right, here we go. So we talked almost two years ago now about braces. You've had them for quite some time now. Um, when you did get them, what did you get done the first time around? Well, it was kind of hard figuring out or remembering like when we first did the podcast because um, I had work done before we had started doing the podcast, so I decided to go back and listen to our very first podcast, and I kind of know what was going on. So what, I, what I'm getting from is that I had had my top braces on, and I was wearing my lip bumper in the beginning, um, and the lip bumper was sort of just a way on how I could have bands on my mouth um, so that um, it would hopefully um, pull my teeth down, pull my back teeth down farther. Well, and the bands themselves were because your um, <clears throat> your mouth hadn't hadn't grown to proportion yet. Nope. So the bands were really designed to put uh, pressure on your your lower palate so that your lower palate would grow at a consistent rate. Um, so at the time, you were hooking bands from the bumper on your lower um, your lower jaw yeah. to um, brace to brackets on your upper teeth. Yep. And that pulled your jaw forward some. Yeah, and we learned that it actually worked a little too well because the lip bumper ended up getting pulled upwards, having me to need an adjustment and um, needing to go and um, needing to have it adjusted again. And honestly, back then I had a lot of trouble with my lip bumper because um, the next month it had actually gotten caught on my bottom lip and it caused me a lot of pain. So we actually had to go in for an emergency thing um, and they completely removed it for that for the next month. Yeah. So that lip bumper was kind of unique to your situation because of the, the different rate at which your mouth was growing. Um, but it did cause some problems because you would get food caught in there. Uh, like you had mentioned, you had the, the inside of your lip had gotten caught in there and that essentially pinched your, your lip between the bumper and your, your gums or your front teeth there. Right. Yeah. And in order to remove it, they had to numb that part of my mouth because it had just caused me so much pain. Um, I think that was one of the only real emergency operations that we had to go in for at the time. Um, but after the month I did get, um, it back in. But then I started wearing the bands again um, instead of ev instead of doing it all the time and only switching it out um, once a day. Um, I just wear them at night. So the bands themselves was that was that something you needed help to put in? Did you get used to putting them in? Were they difficult to put in? Well, at first it was very painful to put in, and we actually had to use ore gel a lot because my mouth would just constantly be in pain. It was not a fun time, and at the start you guys had to put them in my mouth, but as but we also had this one tool that was a hook that I'd use in order to put um in order for you guys in the beginning to put to put to have the rubber bands on my top hooks and then hook it down towards my um lip bumper um but after a while i learned how to use it and then i started even using my finger after i got completely used to it and that tool itself was a little plastic tool that was specifically designed to do that right yep and and yeah right off the bat you were having difficulty so mommy and daddy had to help you but over time you were able to to not only learn how to do it but learn how to do it without the tool so it became less and less of an issue as you learn how to do it but did your bumper ever get loose again after they put it back on? Um, uh, well, not really. They, I'd always go in for the adjustments, but it never really had any more problems after they took it out for the month and then put it back in. And I started just putting the bands on at night. I didn't have any more problems with the lip bumper at that point. So initially you were wearing these bands constantly, right? All, yeah. All the time. Yeah, and definitely the first day after I got all the work done, it was ex 
extremely hard to eat. Like we want to go get sushi and I just couldn't eat anything. So let's let's talk about that. So when we when you first had this work done, the doctor put you on a soft food diet. How did that work out for you? Um well, that was uh well, the I actually so the first soft food diet I went on lasted for about a month, maybe two months, since my mouth still needed to get adjusted to everything in my mouth because not only did I have the top braces and the lip bumper and the bands, but I had also had an appliance that was in the top mouth that I, uh, that um, also was ho- assisting my top jaw. So I had a lot of stuff in my mouth. So the soft food diet so let's talk about that upper appliance there. What was that for? Was that a palate expander or was that something else? I'm thinking it was more of a palate, palate expander. I was always just told to call it an, um, an appliance, but I knew it. Um, but it was also kind of used to push my top teeth forward because I had an underbite where my top teeth would um, would just touch my bottom teeth and they're supposed to go slightly over it. So I sort of had somewhat of an underbite, so they had to um, use that to um, push my top teeth forward. So how long were you on the soft food diet? About um, two months, I think. I, I know it was at least a month. I'm saying at least two months. Like, around two months, I was on the soft food diet. And what did that typically involve? Um, it would typically involve, like, for lunch, I'd have Uncrustables with some yogurt or pudding or jello. Um, and there was also this one, um, cheesecake mix that had, like, a cheesecake flavor with fruit that mommy also got me. Um, she had a lot of stuff for me. I also, for dinner, would have, like, mac and cheese, um, and I, um, I can't exactly remember what I'd have for breakfast, but pretty much everything had to be soft until I realized I was actually able to bite. So, there was a lot of different soft foods that you wound up eating there, and it was obviously a a difficult time. It was a painful time. Um, and to a certain extent, a traumatic time for you. Were there any lasting effects of the things that you ate after that that you just don't find palatable now or anything? Oh my, yes. (laughs) One thing, pudding. I realized that going through the diet, like in the beginning, I never really liked pudding that much. But going through the soft food diet made me realize just how much I hate it. And one time when I was at camp, um, I think last year, um, one of the snacks that they gave you was pudding, and I wasn't going to eat it. But just watching people eat it made me feel nauseous. Like, that, I definitely felt like that was trauma from my soft food diet. So there's foods now that you just won't eat because of having gone through that experience. Yeah, Uncrustables was another thing. Like, um, in the, I mean, I like PB and J sandwiches. I don't mind them, but the Uncrustables, I ate them very often. And having eaten them for over, for over a month and not getting a break because before I would have like an Uncrustable every other day, and then a Lunchable the other days that I didn't have an Uncrustable. But at that point, I was just having an Uncrustable every single day. And at that point, it just made me not want to eat them anymore. Um, We stopped getting them because, honestly, the thought of them just doesn't, for me, just makes me feel nauseous. So what about cleaning your teeth? When you uh, first got the braces on, We'll call that phase one up until we got the bumper off and everything else. Yeah. So during phase one, how was it cleaning your teeth? Was it difficult? Was it impossible? Did you use special tools for it? What, talk a little bit about that. Well, I had to use a bunch of special tools. You guys uh, definitely thought that I needed a lot more help um, than just having a normal toothbrush and mouthwash. So you got, you had gotten me an electric toothbrush that would... Um, spin and help me brush my teeth better and flossing was another big problem um you guys didn't want me to use the you guys didn't want me to have to um just 
floss with the string because that would cause a bunch of difficulty and even when I try it now after having like them for almost two years um I can't even do that so we had gotten a water pig that shot out water and had a little brush that you can use to clean off everything um and it definitely um works out um and uh yeah, the, yeah, they were the main tools that I'd use. Um, I also had to have another toothpaste that um, was minty flavored that I would also have with my normal toothpaste um, to help with the braces. So, talking, you know, there's a when you had everything done initially, there was a lot of metal in your mouth. Um, how did that affect your ability to? form words and to speak was it uncomfortable was it difficult to talk did you have to learn how to talk a different way well i definitely say that after i'd gotten all the work done in the beginning i had a very hard time speaking while we were mommy while mommy was driving me back home we were actually on a um we were on a call with you and I tried to speak and you couldn't understand the word I was saying. The doctor also recommended that I'd have that I'd have to practice saying s since it was pretty hard for me to talk and I wasn't very understandable. I mean I'm not understandable now but because I mumble a lot. Um but back then like it sounded like I was always mumbling and no one could really understand me that well. So how long did it take you to get adjusted to the braces in phase one before, you know, you were okay with the diet and managing them and cleaning them and maintaining them and, and talking? Okay, so talking was probably the quickest thing I was able to get um, normalized to. Um, I was able to um, talk a lot. Um, I was able to get a normal speech going um, right around the time that I realized that the braces when I didn't feel like the braces were anything weird, like, um, before, when I had first gotten them on, it would, it felt weird having the brackets on my lips, and it kind of felt weird because you're normally used to feeling the smooth teeth, and then when you get the brackets on, it's kind of weird with your, um, lips, but I had, once I'd gotten used to that, I was able to talk, um, better. And eating, it took me a little while, but as soon as I realized I could eat solid foods, I was right off of that soft food diet. I did not like that soft food diet. Um, cleaning, I started getting um, more used to. I knew I had to clean a lot. I knew I had to clean my mouth a lot better. Um, but it would, but eating was definitely one of the hardest things for the whole thing. Um, one of the hardest things because. Um, having the lip bumper and the appliance, food would get stuck in there a lot, and that would get annoying. So, all in all, how do you think you fared on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best? How would you say you fared with braces in Phase 1? Um, I'd say maybe a 6 or 7. Um, definitely in the beginning it was very difficult and very painful, but after I'd started getting used to it, things were looking better. Phase one's over and done with. We're we're well into phase two at this point in time. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll see how you're doing in phase two. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at 
www.thesecondsithempire.com. So we're talking braces today, and we're talking about how you are faring with your braces. Uh, we got you through phase one without too much of a problem, some discomfort, uh, some soft food dietary issues that are lasting now. But we're into phase two now, and I think we can say phase two probably kicked off when you had your bumper removed permanently. Uh, tell us what else phase two of your braces has entailed. So after I'd gotten my lip bumper off, I had actually had to um, spend a, f a few months without anything on my bottom mouth. Um, and that was because I was planning on getting my bottom braces on at that point. So um, I think we needed to get... Um, a few more teeth removed. I'm not entirely sure, um, but I'm thinking that we did have to get some teeth removed in order for me to get my bottom braces on. And um, when I did get them on, um, I had to kind of go on that soft food diet again. Uh, that was probably one of the biggest steps in phase two. Now, did that soft food diet entail different foods than phase one, or did you just bite the bullet and go back to some of the old ones. I mean, yeah, that was definitely a change. That was the second first um, soft food diet that I went on, and it was clear that I didn't want to eat the food that I was that um there was before because we had actually gone to the diner after I got all the work done for dinner, and I was able to have a milkshake for dinner, but you all but you were having chicken parm with. Um, cheese, and I actually just wanted your cheese, and I didn't even finish the milkshake because I just didn't want to go back on that soft food diet. Well, and you managed to get through it, though. Mm -hmm. So, what was the big change? What was what was the impact of having to get the braces on your bottom teeth? Was this a learning curve of having having to learn how to talk again? Or was it a different experience than phase one? Honestly, phase one um, got me through the talking. Um, part phase two never really I never really had too much problem with talking um, I was much more adjusted to talking and even when I got the braces on it wasn't that difficult to talk since I was kind of already used to having a bunch of stuff done to my bottom teeth and that was a whole nother thing okay so the initial idea of so you went through without having to do braces on the bottom teeth any brackets on the bottom for the initial go. So then they put them on. Uh, what was the, was it painful when they put the bottom brackets on? Was it strange? Did it take you time to adjust to it? Did you have the appliance still in at the time? Yeah, I had the appliance. It was just the lip bumper that was getting, it was just my bottom teeth that were getting a whole overflow. Um, my top teeth really didn't have much going on um, besides, you know, the casual adjustments. Um, each time. So let's talk about the adjustments. Was this a matter of them going in and tightening the wires on there as your teeth were adjusting? Well, yeah, sometimes they would take my wire out and adjust it since um, my teeth were um, moving more. Um, but, uh, but most of the time they just took out my color, my colored bands and then put new ones on. Um, so, all right, so it's interesting. Let's, let's step back a second here and talk about how the braces themselves work. So there are brackets that go on the teeth, mm -hmm. and they use a form of oral cement to attach them to the teeth. Yep. Then there's a wire that connects between each of the brackets on the upper and the lower teeth. Yes. And that wire is then held on with small colored bands. Um, yeah, but it's also tied in on the, um, I don't know what to call these, the back of, um, Your the molars back. on the back. Uh, yeah. Right, so they're, they're permanently attached to the molars. Well, not permanently. Well, they're... the wire is attached. Yeah. And then it runs around the bottom teeth through the brackets, and then there's the bands that go on the outside that hold the wire to the brackets firmly. Yep. So then what they'll do is they'll adjust the tightness on the bands and it, it 
brings your teeth in to keep them straight, essentially. Yeah. And if it's ever loose, they have to adjust it a little bit. Okay. So, and then as your mouth grows, it loosens up and they have to go back in. They have to tighten it up. And when they tighten it up, they'll pull those bands off. They'll tighten it up and then they'll put bands back on. Mm -hmm. So that's your adjustments. So when they make those adjustments and they tighten things up, is there discomfort? Is there pain? How does that feel? I mean, it definitely feels a little painful, which is why we actually take, um, I take some pain medicine beforehand so that it's not as painful. And I've definitely gotten used to them just taking the bands off. And I'm normally also waiting a little bit because they have to work on the other people going in. Um, so it actually... I adjust to that um, much quicker than I adjust to one, some of the major overhauls. Um, so, like, during the same day, the bands, when they change the color, they'll feel normal, and I won't have to do any, um, and I'll be able to eat normal food. So, you said you take medication. What type of medicine do you take, and you take it before you go to yep. the orthodontist, right? Yep. What do you typically take? I normally take pain medicine such as Tylenol and um, I can't remember the name of the other one. Advil? Advil. Okay. So just standard over-the-counter stuff as preventative, a preventative measure for the pain itself. Yeah. And that makes, like, it doesn't make the pain go away. It just makes it more tolerable. Yeah. So on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst... How, what, what level would you put the pain at that you're experiencing? Mm, probably two or three. It's not that painful and definitely, like, not as painful as some of the other things I felt. And it's much easier to get used to, so I'll definitely rank it, rank it pretty low. Okay. So, are, were there any major adjustments that had to happen during Phase 2 so far that, that you wound up being painful? Um, yeah, besides having the braces put on, the funny thing is that I never had, like, when I had my top braces on in phase one, none of them ever came off, but in phase two, a lot of my bottom brackets came off, and the thing was, the person that put on my bottom brackets was kind of new, and I'm like, okay, why did she put my brackets on? Mm, so it was, so you ran into some, some maintenance issues with the new stuff there and, and you know, we don't certainly don't want to point fingers or anything, but yeah. we don't know if maybe it was bad, uh, oral cement, if the teeth weren't prepared correctly. Cause I have to assume they probably need to do some kind of cleaning or something to get everything off the tooth yeah. before they put the cement on to put the bracket on. So it could have been any number of things Yep. besides the brackets popping off. Did you run into any other type of maintenance issues, wires popping out or anything like that? I mean, sometimes I'd have, um, um, wires come out, but normally it wasn't, um, super painful and, I normally have my appointment a couple of days later, so it really wasn't that big of a problem. So I'd have small maintenance issues, but um, honestly, they weren't like huge overhauls. But I had actually had a recent, um, really big overhaul on my mouth. Um, um, the last time I went. And we'll get to that in a second, but I wanted to talk about a couple of other things first. Okay. So phase two. The bumper's gone. How does that affect it cleaning the teeth in phase two? Um, I found it a lot easier because now it doesn't get stuck um, as much as it would in my bottom teeth. I mean, for a little while, um, I didn't have anything going on my bottom teeth, so they were just plain, um, they were just, my teeth just not covered with the braces yet, while my top teeth were with braces on and it was quite easy and it felt nice not having to have the lip bumper because that also caused a few discomforts from time to time. Now, um, are you still under a restriction as to what you can and can't eat? Are there certain foods you still can't eat with phase two? Um, yeah. Can you give some examples? Um, like caramel. I'm trying to stay away from caramel, liquid caramel, salad caramel. That's definitely one thing I've always tried to stay away from because so it's... like the, the heavy, sticky foods. Yeah, like Laffy Taffy, stuff like that. Okay. Now, is that because it'll stick to the braces or because it's hard to clean or will it actually damage the braces? Mm, 
probably it sticks to the braces and could possibly damage the braces. So I've definitely stayed away from um, a lot of that candy stuff. So your your diet in phase two, have there been any real dietary restrictions that have been problematic for you? Um, not really. I've gotten used to not eating the other stuff because, I mean, even when I didn't have my braces on, I really wouldn't eat a lot of caramel um, or really, like, sticky candies. I never really liked them. So, um, it wasn't too big of a change when I got the braces on for having the restrictions. But okay. the soft food diet, that was... Mm, so, like so you mentioned an, a major overhaul that happened recently. In fact, this was last week. You just had a whole boatload of work done. You were in there for probably an hour, over an hour. Um, while, you know, being the good dad that I am, I sat out in the heat in the car because I wasn't allowed in the air conditioned office because of COVID. Not that I'm complaining or anything. I was happy to do it. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what they did last week. What was this major overhaul? What did it entail? Well, the first thing they did was take out my top appliance, which I had had in for ever since I'd got my top braces on, which have, which were about two years ago. So that was your palate expander. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and them taking it out was kind of weird because they had to break the cement that was holding it in. And that definitely caused um, a big shock for me. They... Um, there were really large clinking sounds, and I had to wash my mouth out a lot during the whole thing, because they were also adding bra more brackets on to the teeth that were growing in that they that weren't there when they first put the braces on, and um, for where the t where the appliance hooked in, they needed to put it in for that. So I had a few more braces done to my top um, mouth. Um, and they also had to um, fix the top wire. Honestly, it was basically just a bunch of top overhauls and a bit of the bottom overhaul as well. Now, was the experience, the overall experience itself, painful? Uh, yeah, I'd say it was kind of painful um, and definitely weird. Um, weird how? Like, Weird as though, like, especially when they broke the cement, that was just one of the weirdest experiences because, like, you hear the crack and it's like, oh, God, did they break a teeth or something? Like, <laughs> it was just freaky. And I think afterwards the pain started to set in more because, for me, it just felt slightly uncomfortable. But then once we were done, the pain kind of kicked in because now I have hooks on my um, brackets and... They kind of feel a little painful. Even now, after about a week, it's I still feel a little bit of the pain from um, my bottom lip from the hook. So you had the work done Thursday of last week. Uh, we did the podcast last week on Saturday as well. And you were pretty much okay at that point from a, from a pain standpoint. You, you were able to talk and everything. Uh, but we're over a week later now, and you're still experiencing some discomfort. Mm -hmm. So those those hooks that they put in, is that in preparation for putting bands back in, or are we going back to bands? I'm, think, I'm thinking we are, because they sometimes ask me, like, are you wearing bands? And I'm like, no. And then they're like, oh, you will be soon. And then this whole overhaul made me really realize that, okay, that time's almost coming. Okay, so you're getting discomfort from the hooks that they put on the bottom. Was there any discomfort or adjustment, comfort adjustment that you needed to make when they took the appliance out? Was there anything strange from that? I mean, the swelling from the from my top mouth, yes. Um, because um, my appliance kind of situated itself on like the top flesh of my jaw. And taking it out really made me feel as though exactly where it was placed and then all the store um, parts of my mouth, on the top of my mouth that um, was surrounding it. So it definitely felt weird to have that out. So what did you get? Did you get like pitting or something on your on your the roof of your mouth as a result of it? I mean, 
I kind of felt sore. Um, like in certain places, it was like puffed up. Um, due to where the appliance was situated. Um, so I'd say that they were sort of sore from um the appliance and never really realized it. Now, how does it feel now? Um, now it's actually much better. I definitely think that part of my mouth is healed. I don't really have any problems. It feels smooth as though the appliance, um, was not there. Of course, I still kind of feel, um, where I do know where the appliance was because there are still some areas that haven't fully recovered, but now there's not as much swelling and it feels more normal. All right, so on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, where do you think you are at your comfort level now? Mm, I'd say 3 or 4. Um, Still not completely done, but definitely not as painful as when I would first gotten it done. Okay. So that's phase 2. Uh, we we will be moving into phase 3 probably in the next, when's your next appointment? October, I think, right? So that'll probably kick off phase three where we go into kind of the home stretch. Um, so let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and we'll talk about what we kind of expect phase three to be. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back. We are talking today about the wonderful experience of getting braces as a teenager. <laughs> uh, Madison just had a, a, a load of work done to her mouth that uh, was phase two of or the conclusion, probably of phase two. And we're moving into phase three now, which hopefully is the home stretch and you shouldn't be dealing with this much longer. We're two years or so into this uh uh, adventure of braces so far. So one of the things that we know we're probably going to be looking at is bands, you know, rubber bands. Explain to us what the what the bands actually are and what the experience of the bands has been for you so far. So the rubber bands, there are different sizes for different jaws. And I have a teal package from the last time I um, had my bands on. And um, my bands mainly were consisted in phase one, and I had them put them on in phase two. So phase three is probably going to con- include them since now I have hooks on where I'm pretty sure I would hook the bands on. And I'm assuming that the bands are just to um, get my teeth to co- um, get um, come together, because in the very beginning, my back teeth wouldn't go together, like, Whenever I'd smile, my top teeth would touch my bottom teeth, but um, my back teeth wouldn't um, come with it. So the bands were kind of used at that point. And I'm assuming they have a similar purpose um, in phase three. So, so braces themselves are all about tension, you know, pulling your teeth together, um, tightening them up and so forth. And, and the bands themselves are another form of tension, but in a different direction, right? So instead of pulling your teeth together, they help to m- adjust your your upper or lower palate with the tension of the bands. Um, so it, it's really all about tension when it comes to to braces. So besides the bands themselves, which you are anticipating having to go back to, um, what else are we looking at in the coming months? Uh, that the doctors told you about? Are you expected to get 
more visits? Are you getting any more appliances put in? Are you getting any more major work done at this point in time? Or are you really in the, the, the you know, last stretch? Well, um, they mentioned a bunch of times as they were doing the work. Um, like, although it was um, discomforting, they said, like, one step closer to getting your braces off. So I'm assuming that we're going into the home stretch at some point. Um, and for the next appointment, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a checkup. I'm not entirely sure they're going to be doing any real major work. It's just going to be changing my colors, making sure everything's um, um, correct and nothing needs to be tightened. So I'm assuming that this next checkup didn't, isn't really going to be anything major done. Um, so we might be in the home stretch. I'm still debating that, though. So through this whole ordeal, you're still going to see your regular dentist, aren't you? Mm-hmm. And you had an appointment within the last month or so to see your dentist. How did that go? Did he have any concerns about the, the health of your teeth, the cleaning of your teeth? Are you doing a good job? You know, I'm sure he recognizes the fact that having braces makes it difficult. Um, did he have any advice for you? Tell us about how your dentist reacted to your... Well, there was um, one thing they wanted to check because um, I do have a problem with my back teeth. Um, um, I think my one of my back teeth is more situated in my gums and it's getting a little... And it could cause some discomfort at some point. I'm not entirely sure, but I know something's wrong with my back teeth. Um, so I'm not entirely sure if they're going to be doing something to help fix that um, because... The last time I went to the dentist, other than recently, um, they had found that problem. Um, but they definitely said I was doing a better job than I did from the last appointment I went to. Um, but they definitely said that I needed to do more work, um, make sure I'm always using my water pick, brushing really good, you know, the typical stuff. So do you think or do you get the feeling that your dentist and your orthodontist are it's a cooperative effort between the two of them, or are they working independently? You know, do you do you feel that that there's a conflict there somewhere, or is it a cooperative effort? I think it's more of a cooperative effort between them, um, because like sometimes we have um, information from my dentist that we bring to the orthodontist, and sometimes we have. Um, um, a message from my orthodontist that we need to bring to my dentist. So I'm definitely thinking it's more of a cooperative thing. And do you think it's working out so far? Um, yeah, um, they don't seem to be having any problems with each other. They just um, need to make sure that I um, have my teeth clean, but also have all the work um, going well. So let's talk maintenance for a moment. Um, we're going to be going into phase three. Is there anything that's going to change from your maintenance? Do we need to get any new uh, tools or apparatuses? Is there anything that we need to be aware of that should be should take special attention or anything as we move forward? Or is it just sort of continue as on as we are? Kind of just continue, make sure I'm still um, brushing well, use my water peg, stuff like that. Okay, so no major changes at this point. Not that I know of, no. And hopefully we are getting to the uh, the home stretch here. Uh, anything else that we need to know of or that is worthwhile to let the audience know about with the tail end of the braces experience? Well, I'm not entirely sure. I'm still kind of figuring out what's going to go on in phase three. I don't have all the information yet, but I'm definitely assuming that I'm at least get, getting the bands back on and um, cleaning's going to kind of be the same. So do you feel that the orthodontist has kind of kept you up to speed as to what the game plan is and what the next steps are and what to expect? Or do you feel like stuff is just coming out of left field and hitting you without you being aware of it? I mean, I definitely feel as though they have been giving me um, the information that I need, um, especially when, like, the last appointment I had before I went to get my appliance out, they had mentioned that my appliance was going to be removed and that we were going to add more brackets on top. Um, they don't tell me everything entirely, um, which is probably why I don't exactly know what's going to happen next. 
I'm just assuming that I'm going to get bands on and it's just going to be another monthly checkup besides getting the bands. Well, and I have to assume to a large extent it's situational. Um, you know, your mouth is going to grow at different rates. They found earlier on that your your jaw was growing faster than they expected with the band, so they had to take the bands off sooner than expected. Yeah. So I, I imagine there's probably a cautionary message there that they don't want to look too far ahead until they see how your how the situation's developing. So the next immediate thing is is probably the only thing that they can really tell you. Yeah. So phase three hopefully is going to be the last thing that we have to do. Hopefully it won't take too long. Um, are you excited to get them off? Um, it'd be nice because they've caused me a lot of discomfort and, um, but you know, it would be nice to have straight teeth for once. So what about socially? You know, obviously with COVID and all that stuff, you're not going into school, you're not seeing your friends a lot, but when you were up until, you know, February, March of this year, you were going to school and everything. Did you find anybody made fun of you or picked on you for braces or made a big deal out of it or anything like that? Um, not really. Of course, there were the people who just didn't like me in general, but they never really pointed out my braces. Um, none of my friends really pointed out too much unless, like, I was just in discomfort and they noticed that I just wasn't acting the same. So no one really ever made fun of me for my braces. The people who were jerks to me just were jerk. Um, the people who were not nice to me were just not nice. So do you think the overall experience itself was tolerable? Um, would you go through it again if you had a choice to go through it? Uh, probably not. Okay. Um, if I had the choice to go through it, um, I mean, it's been a learning experience, definitely. And if anyone else is going through it, I could definitely give them some advice on how to stop the pain and any food and how to successfully go through a soft food diet. Um, but would I go through it again pro if I had the choice to? Probably not. So what advice would you give to uh, a teen who's possibly facing getting braces? Well, I definitely say that taking pain medicine um, would help. It doesn't completely get rid of the pain, but it does help. Um, I'd also say that um, if you're having trouble talking, try um, um, saying as, singing, or practice talking so you can get more comfortable with it. Um, if you're having trouble with your soft food diet, I'd recommend eating, if you don't want to eat like any of the other soft foods that I had to go through with my first thing like pudding or yogurt, I'd say try eating soft foods that are more normal like mashed potatoes and mac and cheese because I had actually gone through quick soft food diet this time and I mainly eat and I mainly ate um mac and cheese, mashed potatoes and some other soft foods. And I'd also break um, any normal food up if you wanted to have the normal food because that also works. When you say break it up, what do you mean? Like cut it up, make it into small pieces in order for you to swallow it. Um, it's not entirely difficult. Um, you, it just is slightly time consuming. Um, like if you wanted to eat a burger, I'd recommend cutting up the burger meat into small little pieces, making ground beef, that kind of thing. So is there anything that you would recommend teens not do with braces? Um, I wouldn't recommend them having any of the uh, any of the can of, of the sticky candies and I definitely want them to be careful with their braces because um I definitely know that I've had a few instances where like my wire could pop out when I ate something. So I definitely recommend people to be much more careful and um, I would say the water pig definitely works very well for anyone. So if you don't want, if you are having a hard time flossing, I'd recommend getting the water pick or just get the water pick in general and floss at the same time. Okay. Good advice. We'll be back in a minute. So I think that was all we had today. Um, I think we covered pretty much everything we wanted to talk about. Uh, not a terrible 
experience for you, but certainly a, a trying one, I think. Yep. Um, you're almost through it. I think at the end, uh, you're going to have straight teeth. You're going to have a beautiful smile. And uh, I think ultimately going, you'll, you'll reflect back on this period later in life <clears throat> and realize that the struggle you went through was probably worth it. So I think we kind of did your closing remarks already. I don't think we need to, to delve into that. Uh, but I would invite folks to check out our long form articles on medium at medium.com slash insights into things. Again, please uh, subscribe to our podcasts. We're up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, uh, Castro, Amazon, and so forth. You subscribe, you'll get notifications, and you'll auto-download the podcast on your favorite podcast viewer. Our podcasts go live at 8 a.m. on Monday mornings. Uh, we would invite you to reach out to us. Uh, you can view us and subscribe to us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can email us comments, questions, and suggestions at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. YouTube has all of our videos, uh, high-res versions of them at youtube.com slash insightsintothings. Our audio podcast can be found at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. And you can catch us on Facebook at facebook.com slash podcast. Just a quick programming note, if you are subscribing to us, our audio versions of our podcast are listed as Insights into Teens, and the video versions are listed as Insights into Things and includes all of the network's podcasts. Or you could visit our website at www.insightsintothings.com for all those links and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights in Entertainment, Hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother, Sam. And I think that's it. Bye, everyone. Another one in the books. Bye.